Sometimes after a series of shocking revelations, all you need is time to take a step back and immerse yourself in a story. That's what our friends at World of the Star have been doing as they intend one of the premier performances of the Cirque du Lyrie, sharing a story about the beginning of the Alliance and shedding a little bit more light upon the world they are in. Who knows what other surprises they'll learn. Before you know, it's been a solid hour just listening and watching this tale in it's intermission time. You just kind of snap out of it and realize that you're kind of thirsty or need to pee and stuff like that. So you got about like 15 or 20 minutes before the tale resumes. So if you would like to go do a little shopping and... The shops will still be open afterwards if you want to go poke around to them, but you guys have kind of a little bit of time to talk about what you've seen or go wander around a bit, maybe get some snacks. You didn't eat a huge dinner, but you did eat it really quickly. There's probably a restroom break involved. Restroom break struggle is a good idea, so you don't have to get up and pee in the middle of something important. Vi's gonna ask Tally, that being that they were talking about, is that a representation of the Belair, or was there something else that happened? Yeah, this is, so, from what I can tell, it's, when they look at the historical events, it's kind of like stories that are told to, like, kids. It's like folk tales based around what actually happened, and... I don't know, like, this is actually pretty close. Some of the stories that I've heard, even though it's not telling the whole thing, it is fascinating to see how they've combined all the different folklore and stuff. And I said, I'm not a historian. I was kind of more Spectre's thing. And she turns to talk to Spectre, and Spectre is gone. She's like, forgot how good she is at that. And she turns back to you. Spectra's more of a historian, so we could ask her about it later. I don't know, maybe she went to be, maybe she went to go say hi to her friend. She'll be back, though. Can we see the friend and Spectre from where we are in the stadium? So since it's intermission, there are a lot of people kind of coming in and out, so it would be hard to spot anybody. And also, I'm going to say Kashara has stepped out, but Ilvasar is still sitting there. You can tell he kind of looks like he's tired after a long day of work. They're gonna have a rough time tracking where they are, because they could be out in the concourse area. But Holly no Spectre, and she seems completely unconcerned. It's like she's just kind of forgot that Spectre can be quiet. If I would like to go back to the shops, I have a question. The races that were being depicted, were they done by uh, characters of a different race? Or were they done by the person of that specific race? All the Eldori were played by Eldori, all the Dindis were played by Dindis, and all the Kesh were played by Kesh. Okay. Here's the thing. Vi would probably like a souvenir, but she's not one for necessarily souvenirs in the form of clothing. So she would probably look at more the handmade things or uh, maybe a poster or some sort of artistic representation of this. Does Vi want to kind of go back to less of the commercial stuff and more of the artism stuff she was looking at earlier and kind of talk to them a little bit more and look at their stuff? Yeah, probably. Okay. I mean, if there's a cool poster or something with the official stuff, then she would probably get that as well. The sort of official commercial posters, they're not super expensive because, like, yeah, the Cirque du Lyrie has a lot of really big things behind it, but since it's just starting out, it hasn't gained a whole lot of traction to make the Cirque du Lyrie specific stuff very expensive. So you can get, like, a very nice sort of symbolic promotional poster for not a lot of money. And there's also a lot of, like, really nice artwork that has been done by some of the artisans off to the side. Okay. They're gonna cost a little bit more money, but it's it's not gonna break your bank. So if you would like to get an artistic rendition of some sort, so there's like actually physical painted, but there's also digitally 
painted stuff that you can get in a little frame that you just sort of roll up. It's a virtual poster, but a painted virtual poster. Hmm. Ferida would have spoken up whenever you got up to go buy something, whenever mm-hmm. she gets back from her initial sprint to the restroom. But did you want anybody to go with you? I mean, if you want to come, fine. If you don't, that's fine. Mm, I'll probably stay here. Okay. Or I'll stay with Anima. Okay. I'm just going to the shops. Okay. Well, give us a shout if you need anything. Okay. Anima, what are you doing? Staying here. Has Anna been bit and enjoying the show? Anna has been wrapped. I was actually about to ask as Farida. Farida would definitely be... You would see her... She's concentrating really hard on what she's watching, what she's been watching, and at a certain point, like, she's been, like, taking notes and stuff. After the lights come up, she opens her computer and starts taking notes. And then at a certain point, she, like, stops and looks up and is like, Hey, uh, Anna? Hmm? Can I ask what your favorite part of that was? At least till right now? Like something that really stuck out? Oh, uh, uh. A favorite? I don't. I don't know if I could pick a favorite. I, I've never seen anything like that before. I have a better wording for it then. What's the okay. first thing that's, that you can remember of it? Whenever you think of the, the bit that we just watched, what's the first thing that you remember? The way. Like the the light being descended when they were describing it, and sort of it started like washing over all of the other people and sort of spread out from the middle from this one. Like that it was more than light. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. That was that that's definitely up up here towards the top of the uh, top of my notes. That's cool, right? It was very cool. It's giving me lots of ideas, that's for sure. <laughs> and that's that's all that she wanted to say. <laughs> She'll probably just be going back into her frantic note taking. Ty is probably still sitting there with you, and he doesn't say a lot. He just like smiles and nods. It's like he's still stoic, but he's warming the y'all. In the time you you've got to know him better, and it's, you realize like it's not like a he's cold. He's just. He doesn't talk a lot, but that doesn't mean he's not willing to talk to you about just about anything. I might ask him what he was, what he thought. I was going to do that too. <laughs> yeah, then I would let you. I would probably still be frantically writing notes. Ty, have you ever seen this before? Can't say I've seen a production quite like this. Tolly's inclined me to watching certain videos of theirs, but something about seeing it in person it's so very different watching the collaboration of countless people who in the time that they're portraying probably would never have expected to see the level of cooperation we have today and it was all because people were willing to reach out and try and work together it's very inspiring to see yes. I've never seen anything like this before at all. This one is quite unique, but you'll find there are a lot more amazing, inspiring, and sometimes a little intimidating things in the universe. <laughs> I'm getting that impression, yes. Also, Ty knows absolutely nothing about your existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know. <laughs> but Anima's willing to if she ever wants to sort of talk to him about it or Tully because she Tully does know some things but I think Ty might sort of sort of maybe either go quiet or if like if you want to keep asking questions kind of like uh, like actually no I don't know what else you would talk about so nope. <laughs> if you have other questions he'll answer them but if not he'll probably just kind of keep watching the crowd it's not a whole lot of Matakai in the stadium, but there's quite a, there's quite a few. It's just nowhere near majority. And um, if you actually take a look at them, you might notice that the red ridge that Ty has, you don't really see that anywhere else. There, 
like the ones you see like they're sort of different shades of green or brown or just sort of like very neutral or earthy colors and sometimes they do sort of have a ridge it's just not always a different color so the fact that his is red like you don't really see that just kind of looking around okay if I do you want to talk to the artisan people about anything in particular, or you just kind of kind of look around? Hmm. I'm not sure because they're pretty specialized in their subject matter. Maybe more of like the symbolic things, asking a bit more about them to just sort of try to understand some of the symbolism. As you ask, they are definitely more than willing to explain things to you and it doesn't all make a whole lot of sense but like their explanation like you're able to follow and understand it but there's still still like sort of cultural implications just because you still have a lot to learn about it mm-hmm. it's like you've, you've learned a piece of it okay but there are a lot of cultures out there that are as varied and unique as the humans are, even though the Federation does kind of try to stamp out uniqueness, but you also are able to find some things that are Eldori, and you recognize them from stuff your parents taught you. I would probably take a closer look at that stuff, then. Sort of like reminders of home, and a lot of the explanations they give you about that, it fits what your parents taught you. Like, maybe, like, some variations. Yeah. Or maybe, like, some details that you've never quite heard before, but that could just be from different family traditions. But it reminds Vi of home in a way I'm pretty sure she's not used to being reminded of home. It's probably, like, sort of like a pleasant sort of nostalgia for other memories and things start kicking in. Yeah. And then maybe a bit of homesickness, which hasn't really hit her in a long time. Yeah, because homesick for a place that hasn't been home for a while. Mm. Have you actually ever shared with anyone in the party how old you are? Like, if they ask, maybe, yeah, but not, like, I don't advertise it. Like, I don't know if anyone, aside from Anima, has ever done anything close to sharing how old they are. I mean, yeah, I don't know. How old does Vilina look? Because I don't think Farida would actually ask what age she is, but she would try to look at you and insight how old you are considering that they've done business before. Hmm. But also, has Farida been around a lot of Eldori enough to be able to sort of, this person is this old, and this person looks kind of similar, so they're probably about the same age. I ask how how old she looks. (laughs) That doesn't mean that Farida has any knowledge that that will actually apply to, it's just how old she looks. Give me a second, the TV's very loud in the other room for some reason. Also, um, yeah, g- give me a second. I need to pull up by his character sheet because I don't remember how old she is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember because, like, I know about how long they live, but... Yeah, I just kind of put a range because I wasn't sure. I think I still have a question mark on mine when we have figured out she's about nine or ten years old. <laughs> yeah, we have a yeah. baby on board. <laughs> Mine's yeah. a question mark. Okay. Uh, we figured it out. Uh, it's now fixed. Young adult for an Eldori, I think. Yeah, young adult. I would say like 20s, maybe early 30s, but. Equivalent of our age humans. <laughs> so yeah. she'll, she'll, she'll probably under- think of you as someone who's in similar age to her. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Of similar maturity. Yes. Well, maybe higher maturity. Let's be honest, Farida probably doesn't actually think of herself as very mature. That's fair. Fair enough. Yeah. Are you going to buy anything? Because I think like, you can get a couple of the handcrafted pieces without spending a whole lot of money. 
It's gonna be like some of the similar, simpler things. Yeah, she'd probably get a more general promotional poster that had either the, I guess, symbol or something of the circus, and then the poster she'd probably get would be of Real Dory. There are some that show the three of them together with a sort of glowing thing behind where it says Cirque du Lyre, and there's also different stylized ones for each of the people, which can, like has different elements to sort of tie into cultural tradition kind of stuff, but also just some of the leading people's personal brands. Yeah. And then Vi would probably also get one of the artists and things that reminded her of her parents. Yeah, maybe a little thing because so since the like since the Eldori are a lot more free to practice, at some point Tali's kind of showed you like the, there's a, a room that you can use like because different Eldori have different traditions. So she would have been like, if you have any sort of practices you want to do, here's a little private room that can be all yours for that. We can decide how much we want to actually kind of get into that later, but Violina does have sort of her own little private space whenever she just kind of wants to sit and think. Okay. Whenever she's not scrolling the shadow net, making jewelry, or trying to keep her friends out of trouble. Yeah. Yeah, she would probably get something small that reminded her of her parents. You also have a nice little conversation with the people, and they tell you where to find them on the like on the internet basically okay. there's, there's the the shadow net and like, let's just call it the light net the light net's the internet here yeah <laughs> the only other thing i could think of was sky net and i'm like nope we're not going there we are not going there mm. off topic question for for anima um okay. do you count as an automaton or a construct or are you treated as a normal thing by the race system that's a good question that I don't know the answer to, actually. Okay. Um, Sorry for the deviation. I'm gonna guess closer to construct, but I don't know. Yeah. And I will mark that one down very lightly. Now, but I wonder why is Faraday wanting to know this? Or why is Victor wanting to know this? Well, you know what I've been working on this whole time. I'm taking on my new class. And uh, I think I'm going to end up going Medic. Okay. Medic is Stabilize good. doesn't work on contra- constructs or automatons. I'm looking it up. Hooray! To see if they put it. It's, it's fine. Sorry for the, sorry for the okay. distraction. Also, here's the fun fact is, for little things like that, your DM is very easily bribed. Ah, uh, this is true. Oreos. Or just say please. Yeah, so if I, you're able to find that sort of find ways to like keep in touch and maybe continue to sort of peruse their wares and you mentioned to them sort of here well whether you mentioned or not just sort of like through the way you talk and some of the questions you ask they can kind of tell you're also a fellow artisan to some extent so I'm like hey if you ever want to talk shop sort of things or hey like sort of check these people out this is a good place to get stuff Things like that. All right, yeah, Vida would definitely note that stuff down. Yeah, I imagine just like pulls out a phone, frantically looks up, and follows all the things. <laughs> As they mentioned, while they sell in person, they do also sell through the light net. Okay. And they travel a lot, so they could be good people to ask questions about things. Like selling your stuff far away. Your team didn't really plan that ahead, but it worked <laughs> out well. Yeah, so once they mention that, I will probably explain that she is interested in opening a sort of site, but she, for the foreseeable future, is going to be on a ship, which goes to different planets. Do they have any advice to give about that? They don't really have a whole lot of time to dig into it now. Mm-hmm. But they sort of mentioned, like, a couple of places to look. And, like, they know some people who do similar things, so it's you can kind of, like, look at their website and kind of see how they do it. And, like, good places to start in your research of trying to figure that out. Because I know Tali's looking into that. 
But she's looking into like six different things and trying to catch up on the past five years. Yeah. She's trying, but she is one person, although she does have a lot of energy and some hacker friends. So as you're sort of wrapping up that conversation, they do the, they sort of flicker the lights so you can know that it, the show is about to start up again. You're able to find your seats and like Spectra comes back after a certain point. She's got some like snack stuff that she passes out to the rest of you. It's like some sweet stuff and some crunchy stuff. She kind of passes around that people can share. Anything anyone wants to say before the show begins again? Not really. I'm good. I can't think of anything. Everyone just kind of settles back in, maybe does some, like, sort of... Elena, do you kind of show off some of the stuff you bought? Or I say, hey, I got a couple posters. I'll, um, I'll show you guys later. But the thing from home, she probably keeps close to her. Understandable. I imagine, like, it's, it's, yeah. whatever it is, is small enough that she can, like, put it in her bag. Take it out of your bag. Oh, you're sneaky enough. You can probably do that without anyone noticing, but Holly gets excited when she sees the poster and she's like, oh, which one did you get? Well, the official one I got of all the different races with the light behind them, which was really oh, cool. that one. Yeah. Uh, the and- good one. Then I got, with the Artisan one, I got one just with the Eldori. Oh yeah, that one was really pretty too. Mm-hmm. Don't tell anyone, but I realized that apparently one of my friends works in the tech booth, and Betty would get a signed poster for us. Ooh, that'd be really cool. Ooh, that sounds real cool. I'm picking it up from him afterwards, but that one's definitely going in the media space. <laughs> Spectre's Cox and I bro. Decorating my ship, are we? Come on, like you'd say no to that. Spectre just kind of giggles and settles back into her seat and munches on her popcorn. And also, if you're looking, the mysterious stranger has once again, like, resumed their scene. Just kind of chatting with the person next to them. Occasionally glances over at y'all, but doesn't seem... Actually, full insight, anyone who's going to be watching her, even if it's just, like, sort of briefly. I'll, I'll take a glance. Yeah, Vi would, so... Come on, you'd be nice. Damn. You said insight? Yeah. Or you can use passive insight if you roll poorly. Yes, no. passive insight. That's a 14, then. Thank you. Okay. Like, 11? Okay, so he seems kind of curious about y'all, but it's like a very mild curiosity. Okay. It's like a... I've never seen those faces with her before. She's probably made new friends. Okay. And the lights start to dim again, and they left some of the set pieces out, and you see, like, things start to, like, slowly, like, move and flow, and the color lights just start bearing up, and you... Not entirely sure how he got there, but the ringmaster's once again in the center. And he starts talking to Fair. Are you gonna do another look around to see if anyone's watching you? Early? I think it would be perception. Okay, seven. Or we can use passive if you roll poorly. Thirteen. Um, I'll do it's kind of staring at you a little bit. But roll inside if you want to see why he's staring at you. Uh, Twelve. It's not that hard to tell. I'm kind of staring at you because he thinks you're cute. You still have your face on. It's just like a, ooh, she's cute. I make very direct and uncomfortable eye contact with him. Get him to stop staring. He stops staring and the girl at him just kind of like laughs and elbows him and just shoots you a look. And she might think you're kind of cute too, but she's not staring at you. <laughs> She gives him a playful smack on the head, like, dude, stop staring at her, you're making her uncomfortable. That'll do. So, some of the different pieces of the set start moving and flowing, and it's like you see, like, grass blowing in the wind. And you also notice that, that all the people are back on the spots where they were left. As the ringmaster continues to describe glowing visitor that came down from the stars and the glowing light descends 
once again, it's sort of like when it touches the bottom, you see an actual layer as part of their production. And it's it's still glowing slightly, and you can't tell if it's intentionally giving off that glow, or if there's sort of someone from the outside making him kind of glow a little bit, but you can see the parts of the suit. All of the people are very cautious about this strange being at first, but the stranger from the heavens is very patient and allows all the people to sort of come to it in their own time, and they speak to the stranger of their troubles and the things that they're struggling with in trying to understand their neighbors and they start learning how to work together and he gives suggestions and helps them start to understand each other. So they start working together and he tells them that because they have been afraid of this strange thing in the stars for so long that they've used that here and the fact that the others were different to create problems and keep with their bickering when they could easily work together and he told them like do not fear the thing in the stars and they're able to work together to build a ship that will allow them to go and discover once and for all what this big thing is and so there are flashes of different people working on different parts of the ship. At first they start on their own, but then you see different races on the different planet sets. And it's like they're working together and like finding ways to integrate their technology. And finally, they do have a sort of ship which kind of like sort of floats into the center. And you see the three leaders, one from each race, who've been sort of leading this thing. They were always the most graceful and the most vocal, and they were like the ambassadors as they get on the ship with the speech about how they're going to together find out what this thing is, because whatever it is, it's better to face it together than alone, because it's a big universe. What's the point in exploring the universe if you're just going to be doing it by yourself? So they get on the ship, and as they do that, the set pieces from each of the planets pull away, and you see the ship is on one side of the floor, and as they're traveling, you see them talking and sort of talking about how amazed they are, that like, at how far they have come, and just kind of, like, looking back at what they've accomplished together, and talking about doing things in the future, and can see like the lights passing them and like small little globes of light they're supposed to be stars passing by to represent their traveling and out of nowhere this huge construct of it, like it looks like a beast unlike like anything you've ever seen it's it's just it's huge its skin is almost as dark as the night sky to the point that like it almost blends in because there is an air of darkness around where the ship is to represent the night sky and you see this giant eye open and you can see that the three people on the ship they're afraid and you feel afraid for them because our ship is tiny and it's about the size of this thing's eyeball this thing is gigantic there's some panic for a moment they talk about like should we attack should we flee and they're like no we're gonna find out what this is we're gonna find out together they remember the words of the light that fell off from the sky and we've come this far together, let's finish what we started. So they approach and they discover it's not some sort of monster, but it is such an organic beast unlike anything they've ever seen, but it's not hostile. It's just kind of there traveling through space and they marvel at it because they're able to travel with it and fly around it and learn a lot from it and it is very okay with them being there and there's a moment where the ship almost gets destroyed by asteroids and it starts to move in a way they've never seen it move before and at the moment they're terrified that they're either going to drive by, die by rock or by beast and like this huge fin that comes up and sort of like wraps around them. For a moment, you're worried that they're gone. And as all the asteroids and the comets pass away, the fin disappears and you see the ship is fine. The creature, whatever it was, had protected them. 
And so they marvel at, at what has happened. They realize there may be a lot of mysteries in the universe, but just because it's something that is, un- is unknown and it's different doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean it can't you can't find a way to understand it. And so they come back to their planet and to their people who were all just like amazed that not only did the ship actually work, but they survived and they asked for a tale of how they slew the beast and they said well we didn't we didn't have to it wasn't there to attack or to harm us it was there because the universe is its home and it actually protected us so as the lights start to fade and the ringmaster's voice your attention is drawn back to where he is once again standing in the middle of the room it's a habit of disappearing and repaying the ring meter. You're still not entirely sure how, but fair that you know it's probably some sort of technological mirage trick or something. It's just using something you haven't quite seen before. There's razzle-dazzle involved. There's been a lot of razzle-dazzle. I imagine there's been some sort of jaw-drop moments, especially when the Iron Beast appeared on stage, because that was not entirely an illusion. And the ringmaster comes back to sort of wrap up the tale and talk about how from that day forward, no one truly feared to travel the stars again because as long as you travel with people you know you can trust and travel with people you know you have your back, you can conquer anything. Lights come up and all the main actors come to take their bow and there's like a wild applause going on. And- like, the lights come up both on the stage and around the arena and the audience areas. Holly's going on. Spectra looks like she has had an actual blast. Even Ty looks impressed by this. Jared is probably one of the the early ones to be standing and applauding. Yeah, there's just a couple people that stand up with you, and everyone's just going crazy. And I, Anima, do you both stand up and start? Celebrating? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have looked everywhere I can possibly think of. I cannot find any answer to your question. If it doesn't say otherwise, then they're probably just treated as a humanoid. Yes. Great. Then I'm going to take Stabilize. DM decision. She counts as humanoid. Point of order, I am not made of metal. It is a bioengineered shell. Yeah. I am made of flesh. I am a flesh person. I need sleep. I need to eat. (laughs) Just because I've already established, we're just going to stick with the you need four hours of sleep thing. Yeah. And since you've been eating anyway, it's... Yeah. It's not, like, a huge deal, but I finally, I have a for realsies answer. (laughs) And not just some bullshit we made up. Yeah, and your DM now has a thing that could help with your personal quest thing, which I'm like... Awesome. Yay. The question is, I don't know where that marking would be. I found another thing and I sent it to her that was also in that section. I was thinking of other ways, but I'm like, this is a lot less potentially gross for people who might be squeamish when it comes to medical things. Because I was like, I'm just like, I don't know how I'm going to have Ali track any of that down, but that detail does help a lot. The detail is that technically I am branded. <laughs> I have brand recognition, guys! <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's going to make some things easier, but results on that may take a while to come back from the search just because plot reasons. Yeah, so. Anyway. We can get back to that later. So, are you standing and applauding after the circus? Yes. That was amazing. Are, are you emoting, <laughs> actually? I mean, I'm standing and clapping and being excited about that that was wonderful and magical and cool. Anima enjoyed a thing. I did it! Anima enjoyed a thing. Very much enjoyed a thing. Yeah, that's my apology for accidentally um, ruining it a mistake. It's like, look guys, they fixed it! Afterwards, Tali slips off to go find her friend who's going to get her the poster. And she's like, yeah, I'll meet you guys back at the car. And as you guys start walking back. Erda, what's your passive perception again? 
actually, Bill's kind of scanning the crowd as where as you're sort of walking back to the car, or like sort of walking and looking at different stands. Because I give it like a a twelve or a thirteen. I actually was just thinking about the handcrafted stuff. That there's probably some Promethean stuff there that I might be interested in picking up. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I will allow you guys, if you want to, like, take another, like, 10 or 15 minutes to sort of yeah. shop around for stuff. It could be, like, a decided, yeah, we'll just wait for Tolly so she doesn't have to walk back alone and we can take some time to shop. I just look for, like, one small, like, desk decoration item, like a small statue, maybe four inches tall or something like that. A little sort of symbolic thing that kind of reminds you of home a bit, maybe something similar to what your parents might have had. Yeah, like a, a, a front hall decoration. So you're, you're able to find a lot of things, both things that just look symbolic and like stuff that'll hold things that's symbolic. It's all stuff your parents taught you about. It's something you may not be used to having seen displayed very much, just because yeah. like you had to kind of keep some stuff private. It doesn't have to be a tiny decoration. You could probably get like a larger decoration for not a lot of money. I would imagine that there are some children that are being dragged along with these these kind of nomadic carnies that are making their way around. And I kind of also would imagine that the children have tried to make some of the trinkets that their parents make at some point. And maybe there's like one of them that has been slipped into like a series of well-crafted statues, like well-carved statues. And there's one that's like, you can tell that someone tried, but it's really not up to the level of everything else. And she'll probably go for that. It's surprisingly close considering when you look this kid's probably like 12 yeah yeah like this is this is the kind of thing where where you can you can feel their pride even though the actual final result is kind of winky wonky i'll definitely take that and buy that as you do that there you see this little promethean girl she looks over and you can tell she has synthetic patches on her skin She's kind of shy and hanging in the background, and when she sees you via that, her face just absolutely lights up. Buying it? I have, like, my back to the crowd, right? Yeah. You only have the, the salesperson in front of me? I'm going to block my face with my hand that's towards the crowd, so that the crowd can't see my face, and I'm going to flick the earring on and off, and I'm going to wink at her with normal Farida face, and then turn it back on. She's trying really hard not to scream right now. <laughs> Just silently put my finger up to my lips, smile, wink again, and leave. She's still staring in shock. You have made this kid's life. Melted for the crowd. That was so cute. <laughs> After a moment, you're like, Are you alright over there? Yeah, yeah, hey, I'm fine, Mom. I'm, I'm fine. It's just. But I saw someone. It's fine. I'm good. <laughs> okay, look, well, just just keep working on the, that craft work. We'll still have some of yours one day. Yeah, she can say. She's still, like, absolutely beaming. And are you just kind of tagging along with everyone else as they do their shopping? Yep. Are you looking at anything in particular? Or just kind of, like, perusing the tables and so forth? I am just wandering behind someone. I don't really care who, but someone in my party, I'm just sort of following. Follow-up shopping question. Are there any Ashen Forge selling anything? I was about to say, as you're just kind of following around Anima, you just, there's one table that, that just, it just has an Ashen Forge behind it. And, well, it's not just an Ashen Forge, there's someone else and there's an Ashen Forge sitting at a table, and you probably just assume they might have just been there to make sure no one took anything, but there is a dentist with them and says, Oh, hello there. Would you be interested in something from this table? And she gestures over and roll intelligence. Oh boy. I don't think that's my strong suit. It's not. Goodbye. I'm going to roll the dice that hasn't rolled a two this evening. Oh, that's a good one. Did it roll a one? <laughs> <laughs> if I get a one, I'm blaming you. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's a natural 20, baby. Hey, I'll take that one too. 
<laughs> That's a nat 20. <laughs> Thank you, mom dice. That was my mom dice. My mom dice rolled the first first time I ever rolled it. Gave me a natural 20. Yay. Okay. Sorry. Your mom dice are a special kind of blessed. When you're mom looking dice. at the stuff on this table, it's one of those, like, once again, you know you've never seen it before, but by just looking at it, it's like you don't remember seeing it before. It's kind of like you know you have. Just something that just seems incredibly familiar about it. And looking from like the stuff that's on this like to the dentist to the Ashen Forge, you can tell it's the Ashen Forge that made them. Mm -hmm. And just sort of like looking at it, it's made by Ashen Forge for Ashen Forge, and it. It's like it has a significance to it and like why things are made the way they're made. Mm -hmm. Similar to the sort of cultural significance of what Ferda and Violina bought. Do you go up and continue to peruse the table and ask any questions about it? Uh, <laughs> Does anyone want to go with Anima <laughs> to sort of girl support? Yes. yes. I'm being emotional support. You've kind of got fair to, I'm imagining you're standing close behind her, not like uh, pushing her physically, just sort of, but more of a physical comfort. An insistent, an insistent fair to... <laughs> More of a, uh, a friend that you've asked to walk with you through the show floor at a con, but they're not really looking at anything in particular, but they are following you. I've got your back. You don't have to walk into this conversation alone, kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Vi's also probably there nearby, so she's already got her stuff. And with the other artisans, one way or another, you probably also sort of like recognize the posture as someone who also crafts some of your research. You you also probably get the feeling that these items are culturally significant to the Ashen Forged. Oh. Cool. I'm going to go up to that table where I saw the familiar thing. As you walk up the Ashen Forge, too, it's, it's a male. He's probably about the same height, dark hair. Maybe not quite as beefy as you are. I'm beefy. Yeah, but okay. Ashen Forge are actually, like, they're a little larger, but he he's not super beefy. And as you walk up, he says, hello, can I help you with anything? Um... Well, I saw this, and I, I point to the one that looks familiar to me, or like that feels different. There are a lot of things on there that feel familiar, but there's probably like one thing in particular that just kind of, it's just of a, I know this, and more of like, it's like there's just like a more emotional sort of hint to the recognition. Mm hmm And I, I saw this, and, um, I'm, uh, I'm having some memory problems, but this thing feels familiar. Can, can you tell me what it is? Memory problems? That is strange, but I hope they are fixed soon. I can explain what this is. Do you have a second chance? Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you a question you weren't ready for. I'm pulling an Alexis. <laughs> There wasn't going to be an Ashen Forge table, but I was like, you know what? Screw it, there's going to be. <laughs> I'm pulling an Alexis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what you are looking at, it's like a sort of puzzle box thing. I can't box? tell if it's like a very complicated puzzle box or just something that you store stuff in that's pretty simple to open and explains it is a symbolic item meant to represent the change that a living being goes through when becoming an ashen forge because we were created as a way to honor those who have passed on and allow their passing to bring a new life so a lot of the symbolism behind this box is how old thing, and he's like taking it apart. And as you look, you can tell 
materials it's made of are rather weathered. Mm-hmm. It's like someone's taken older material and sort of refinished it and repurposed it. But an old thing can become something new, and it still contains pieces and some textures of what what was, but it is now something new. And I often design these boxes to hold sort of mementos for if you to in some way honor who you once were. I just realized that just does not help with her crisis. Nope. He's gonna start sort of talking through some of the other things. Doesn't know what all you do and don't remember. Mm. So he's just going to start explaining the different things on his table. And all of it's like very utilitarian. Mm-hmm. There's also like stuff made from different homeworlds to represent like where the different Ashen Forge have come through. And there are symbols that they have created. And he explains that the Ashen Forge have adopted some symbols that some of their artisans took and sort of combined different symbols from the different cultures that can be turned into Ashen Forge. Sort mm-hmm. of combined it into a new symbology. And he explains, like, different things that sort of symbolize strength and protection and as well as, like, building and crafting and different studies. And also, when he points to the things pertaining to protection as well as healing and restoration, you feel sort of like a similar kind of, like, emotional tug to do they have things with those symbols on them? There are various different things with the symbols on them that can be used for different things. Like, it's there's nothing really big, but there are things that you could um, use. Is there maybe, to... like, a hairpin? Yeah, there's, like, so he does have some, like, different sort of, like, hairpins, or you could get a necklace with symbols on it, or just, like, small things, but... For the jewelry stuff, it's made of like very sturdy and durable material, mm-hmm. and some of it can be like a little multi-purpose. Like you can, like the necklace has a compartment you can slide off, and you can um, put stuff in it and things like that. I would like a hairpin with a protection symbol on it. I would like to purchase that. Okay, so you're able to get one, and it's uh, it's pretty sturdy. It's decorative. It's Big enough for like people can see it, but it's not like super big flashy thing. Mm-hmm. And he explains how different parts of the clip can be used to sort of like help open things or help. If there is a loose screw, you can use this part to tighten it, stuff like that. It's a multi clip. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was about to say pick locks, but I was like, no, I'm not giving you that. Don't give me a lock pick. I will break it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't have terrible dexterity, but I'm yeah. not skilled in that. <laughs> My ears yeah, so perk up. <laughs> I'm not a rogue. <laughs> you have some time if you, if you would like to talk to him or ask him any questions. He may just comment about how protection is admirable and stuff like that. Like, he'll talk about that, but he's not going to pry any answers out of you. If you want to maybe ask him a question. I'm going to ask him. You explained all this to me. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Ren. What is yours? Anima. Anima. That's a very pretty name. Thank you. And I do hope you get your memories back. It's not very common that that happens but I wish you luck and may the stars be your guide. Thank you. Nods and uh, the dentist that kind of waved you over is off chatting with someone else. Like, the crowds are thinning out a bit and you can hear the telltale pitter-patter of Tally running through the hallway (laughs) as she comes back. I'm going to stick it at the top of my braid and go join my friends. And my hat's real close. She's got a hairpin. 
Shakti might be starting to get some sort of... But even the reason she was never able to remember or recognize anything is because she was in a very, very foreign place. But now some things kind of like sort of muscle memory are starting to back in a little bit. Yeah. Reached tangent. I'm not going medic. I'm going... What is this called? Machinist. Moving along. Okay. You guys are waiting for Tali to return, and you're all finishing up your shopping. Kishar and Elvisar have already headed back to get a trolley back to the car, and they'll wait for you before they leave. They're just going to go get the car going, because they figure you guys might want to take some time, and their kids are coming back soon. They might like a little time by themselves. I have a terrible question. Does Elvisar sound like Elvis? <laughs> Not that you've noticed. <laughs> okay. It's not how his name is spelled, but... I mean, y'all, you'll see him tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> but, right, like, as you're right, finishing... Right, right. <laughs> kind of also, like, Spectra wandered off. You figure she, like, might have gone to the bathroom or something. But you finish up your shopping. You look up and... She's standing there, and the mysterious woman she made eye contact with earlier is standing there as well. She's wearing, like, a very stylized, but not super flashy suit. And see that she's standing there. She's just been kind of observing you. You're not entirely sure exactly how long she's been standing there, though, Vi, you did kind of feel like it's probably only been, like, a couple of minutes. Okay. They're standing and talking, but it's not like they're... Being sacred. It's like they walked up and were letting you guys finish with what you're doing. And now they're just kind of standing and talking, keeping an eye on you all. So what do you do? So she's with Spectra right now? Yeah. She's just standing there. They both seem just kind of relaxed. And at this point, Ellie's still down the hall. And you can hear her very familiar bouncy, chittery Destiny you realize she dragged Ty with her. <laughs> hear the glitter from around the corner? She didn't drag Ty with her. Ty just kind of tagged along because whenever she takes off that fast, she doesn't always look where she's going. <laughs> mm-hmm. she, she's getting closer, but like you can't tell exactly what she's saying with her. She's just, she's just chattering along. You can hear like another voice responding that has the same sort of tone as... No, I don't know if it's another dentist. She's just talking to a friend. I haven't decided what he is yet. Yeah, so what do you guys do? Are you going to approach or are you going to make them approach you? I am going to follow whoever goes first's lead. I mean, they're like maybe 10 feet away. <laughs> yep. I'm not going to be the first person to talk. Eh, I'll have Vi do it. The chances of the woman being an enemy are relatively low at this point. She'd make sure that everyone's done shopping, or at least uh, that Emma has finished looking at her at the Ashen Forge table. And then she'll go and sort of head toward uh, Spectra and the other woman. Be like, hey Spectra, I think we're just about finished. Um, is everything okay on your end? Did you find what you were looking for? Yes, everything is fine. It's just waiting for the rest of you to be done before I introduce you to someone who may be joining us for a bit. The rest of y'all walked up. I'm assuming, Fairy, you followed Vi. Yes, I was the second person to go. I won't be the first, but I'll be the second. Have you also approached Anima? If they start going, I will follow them. You're maybe 15 feet away. It's like close enough to where you can hear. And you're done with your shopping. Anima, as you sort of get close enough to complete the sort of rough semi-circle. Vector just kind of nods over. Everyone, this is an old friend of mine. Her name is Maria, and she's going to be joining us for a while. I think we've helped some of your uh, associates before. Oh yes, and I was very, very pleased to hear that. It's a pleasure to meet you. What are your names? I am Violina. Hi, I'm Anima. She just nods as you introduce yourself and then looks at Farida. My name's Farida. Nice to meet you. 
That's a name I never expected to hear over here. At least I haven't heard it in a while. It'd be that uncommon. Not as common as you think, but... Yeah, parents had peculiar tastes. Fair enough. So Spectre and I have done business together in the past. I've traveled on Noble Star quite frequently. And I've recently found myself in need of a new form of transportation. I can help with a few things and help maybe land some interesting jobs. And I've heard you have quite a few mysteries going on. And I have business that would be much easier done if I'm not having too big a ride for the planet. It's not too much to ask. I'm curious what it is you do. I work in trade of sorts. I used to have my own ship, but mm, circumstances have been made my ship hard to find. Hmm. If I would like to roll an insight on this. Go for it. Yeah. Please be nice. Okay. Insight 18. Erna, do you want to insight check as well? Sure. What vibes you're getting off of her? Vibe check. Yes. It's not the vibe check you had us doing. <laughs> insight, 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 insight. Hi, there you are. Oh, that's a 14. Okay, so he doesn't seem very shady at all, but you, you get the feeling like she may be involved in a lot of odd business, but it's you don't get any weird vibes from her. You just get feeling like maybe she just doesn't feel like laying all of her business out on the table. But Vi, you've kind of dealt with people like her before, at least like sort of her type of people. She might be involved in some form of smuggling, but she doesn't give you the vibe of someone who's dealing in anything particularly dangerous. You've probably heard both Spectra and Tully, just like whenever they're regaling stories, talking about how much they dislike people who like deal in drugs and weaponry and stuff like that. And the fact that she seems so comfortable around Maria, like she may be a smuggler, may not do all of her business 100% officially, but you don't f- feel like she's into anything bad. This might not do everything 100% by the book, though, to be fair, you don't know exactly what the book it is like in the, in the Alliance. So do you need us to help you find your ship, Maria, or you just gonna go with us and then head your own way? I have a feeling, given how long it's taken me to, so far to find anything on my ship, it might take a while, and I don't know if I'll ever get it back in one piece, but I would like some help tracking down some leads, and honestly, I miss traveling aboard the Opal Star. It is a very pretty ship. Yes, and I traveled on it some with Spectra before I got my ship, which was... We'll find out where that is, and perhaps some of my business can help you with some of your business. But for the moment... Spectra here tells me that you know how to handle yourself in unique situations, and I could possibly use someone to help with the distraction. And can improvise, although I prefer not super high profile. Kind of distraction. We can talk more about it in a bit. How about we all go for drinks? On me. And then we can talk about it, and you can decide what you want to do. Sounds like a beneficial uh, call for everybody. Very well, and I just look forward to getting to know the rest of you. You know, Spectre likes to keep interesting company, and if you're a friend of hers, you're a friend of mine. Likewise. Tolly comes up and is very excited to see Maria. Almost tackle hugs her, but she holds herself back, because you, you get the feeling Maria might not be all about the hugs, but he does accept the hug, it just Tali restrains herself from tackling. And she chatters excitedly, she lets Ilvasar and Kishara know that they have ran into an old friend and they will be coming back to the house later. Like, it's not super late at night, but imagine it's probably, like, 
eight or nine. You pile into Maria's car, which is a different kind of nice than Kashara and Elvisar's, like the modern sports cars. And then there's the car, there's the kind of sort of like a look how rich I am kind of car. This is like in between that. On the outside, it looks subtle. On the inside, you're just like, whoa, this is nice. It's a Maserati. I kind of like that. Like, it's not super flashy, but it's very nice. It's very comfortable. And when the door opens and closes, it sounds a lot heavier than you would expect. And, like, as you all load in, we're going to end with you sort of driving off. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned next time to find out what happens on board the Opal Star. If you don't want to wait, you can get early access to our episodes over at patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial. If you like our show, please consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting app so people can know where to find us. We couldn't do this without your help. Aboard the Opal Star is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is DM'd and produced by me, Brianna Toiber. I'm Casey, and I'm playing Anima the Ashenforged. Victor, I'm playing Farida the Queen. My name's Alexis, and I am playing Mylena Sorel, the Eldori. With music by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com.